Welcome back you guys. Tonight we are going to be working on a M&P 2.0. Now, before we jump into this cut work and discuss it a little bit more, this customer ended up sending in, of course, the hardware to be worked on and some additional things. So I want to set this to the side. I want to talk about a couple of things that they sent in from their region. So we're going to start with the easy stuff. We're going to move into some of the more advanced stuff. So we end up having the Cree oil Okay, you guys have probably seen this before. This is a really, really common product all across the United States. If you have not used this, I highly recommend you do so. Now, with that being said, another one was sent in, which is more of like a Chipotle all-purpose seasoning, and I've never seen this one. So I'm not sure if this is specific to that region or I don't get out that much. Of course, my wife does the cooking. I pretty much can only boil water. But with that being said, this is pretty interesting to me just because I kind of like this so much. So with that being said, this is, this is kind of on the top of my list of seeing how this comes out. We're going to set these aside. We've got some more stuff. I'm just going to kind of put them here. We also have a couple of these. Now this ends up being a Cree oil praline. That's pretty interesting. I did a little bit of uh, ingredient searching on the back and I'm seeing pecans, I'm seeing molasses, I'm seeing some of that kind of stuff. So that's probably right up my alley. Of course I've got two kids and they'll pretty much eat anything. So we're going to see um, how that goes with them. But this is also really, really cool. Now if you're curious, if you're just not sure, this is um, this customer is from Youngsville, Louisiana. So that's, that is where this individual is from. So that's obviously where this stuff is coming from. Now, let's set, let's set these aside. We've got some other ones here. Do, do, do. We've got four of these actually. So that's, we have four people in our household. So we're gonna, we're gonna break those open all at the same time. We're gonna see if we can get some opinion on those. Now we did have some other stuff that came in as well. We had some work gloves. Okay, so everybody can use some work gloves. I'll be tearing through that stuff all the time, destroying things. So that's pretty nice. Now this is an XL and this happens to be just a, a good old standard. This is. This is a, um, a different brand, but they're, they're a textured, you know, pretty rugged work glove. And this happens to be just a, a large. So the idea is that two different sizes. Of course, you know, my wife does a lot of the work here as well. She helps me along the way with that. So that's pretty cool that she's going to have something that fits her hands. I'm going to have something that fits my hands. Guys, I think um, we're going to jump into the work. Big thank you to this customer for sending in this extra stuff. If I have an opportunity, I may actually... Um, give one of these a try and give you my feedback before the end of the video. It depends on how much time I have. And um, we'll just kind of see how that comes out. Let's jump back into the slide work. I'm going to clear this off and let's bring it right back. All right, guys, let's jump right straight into the cut work. We have a fairly large order here. Um, this is what I would consider to be a semi-standard service we offer. Of course, we have some additional changes to this order. One of the reasons why we're building a YouTube video of it to educate you a little bit more to let you know that other services can be offered on existing patterns that you do see. Let's jump into that. Okay, so first and foremost, we've got the um, MP9 2.0. So this is a newer model slide. And I want to talk about the work and then I want to talk about just one concern I have, and then we're going to jump into it. So we're going to be doing some side shaving. So we're going to end up shaving from the barrel, from basically the barrel zone forward to remove all the text off of the slide. That's going to clean the side of the slide. We're going to end up doing the reverse raptor cuts on this slide. So uh, if you're uh, not 100% sure what that is, our typical raptor cuts would go this way. They would kind of start from the back left and they would make their way up and we would have a series of three or four depending upon how long your slide is. The reverse raptor cut is exactly the opposite. It's going to start up here and it's going to make its way to the center and then it's going to start here and it's going to make its way to the center. So it's more of like a reverse barb on the side of the slide. Now of course that means we have additional cleanup after it's been cut to make sure that it isn't a barb and that it doesn't end up causing major issues. So there's a little bit more work involved with that but in the end it does show more barrel. They're cut further down on the side of the slide than what you would see with just the stand old, standard Raptor cuts. So that's one of the reasons why we do see a lot of people go with them. Let's talk about some of the other standard work and then we're gonna jump into uh, some of the extra work. So we're gonna do a standard C style Cobra nose cut on here. So we're gonna see that. We're gonna have a chamfered edge on there. We're going to be doing a top knurling on the slide. So we're gonna be doing diamond knurling from the front sight all the way to the rear sight. We won't be doing it on the back side of the rear sight down here. If you look, hard to tell. This is actually a higher surface than this. There's a lower ledge down here and that is one of the reasons why we do not do the knurling on that lower ledge. Plus about 85 to 90 percent of that lower ledge is covered by the iron sight. So 
This won't get knurled down here, but of course the entire front zone will get knurled and it will be knurled in front of the iron sight in the front. We're also going to be doing knurling on both sides of the slide and we're going to be stopping right around this zone here. We do want to keep the logo on here, so we're going to be doing from the front all the way up to this zone and then this is going to stay. Of course, same thing over here. This is all going to get done and we're going to come at an angle, so this, this zone will not be done. It's kind of nice to see um, some of the caution, you know, capable of firing when the magazine is removed text. That's going to be gone, you know, fully gone. We're going to see some lower edge texture there to match the top texture. Guys, we also have barrel work that's going to match with this. So the top of the barrel is going to be knurled. Okay, so we what we have to do is we have to remove the 9mm off the top of the barrel, and then we're going to end up doing a knurled pattern. Now, if you take a look at this barrel, you'll see, and it's, it is kind of hard to tell if I've rotated a little bit, you see it. It has kind of a taper here, right? And then it goes flat, and then, of course, a side taper and side taper. So the idea is that this flat zone on the top will end up getting knurled. This ramp will not, and, of course, the sides will not. It's actually better that way because as this slides under the slide during the recoiling process, this actually is where it scrapes on, so we're not going to be dragging the scrapes on the underside of the slide as aggressive as we would on, say, like maybe a Glock, where that knurling pattern is all the way right up onto the edge where it locks up. So we've got a little bit of a transitional ramp to get into the knurled area before we, you know, go that far into it. All right, so the ejection side of the barrel is going to end up getting an American flag that we're going to be putting on there. So that's going to be kind of cool. We're going to see that here. It's going to be stand standoffish, so it'll be raised, of course. And then the barrel's going to get polished. Now, on the barrels of the shields and the M&Ps, these barrels are actually a black nitride coating over what would be a stainless barrel. So you've heard me say a long time ago in the past that if you take one of these barrels and polish it, they're actually one of the nicest looking polished barrels that, that comes out as a project, okay, versus all the other barrels that are on the market. We obviously see a lot of steel barrels that we don't recommend, but these and the Springfield barrels happen to be one of the nicest I guess full luster, if you want to call them that way, um, type of a barrel polish. They just stand out better. They use a high quality grade stainless steel under the black coating. Why do they not leave it silver and have that as an option? I have no idea, but it is one of the nicest steels, stainless steels, I should say, that's used in, uh, in the firearm industry as far as I'm concerned when you're processing that exact order. Now, one of the things I want to jump in, I want to talk about something. I've never seen this before. I'm not sure um, what the deal is going on here. One of the things you guys are going to notice, I'll include a picture. Looks like there's a rib right here. You guys see that? It's sort of right there. Right? Interesting. It's on this side too. So I want to, I want to make a comment. I want to say something. Um, and then, I want, and then of course, we're going to jump into the cut work. Um, you know, we see a lot of different weapons hit our countertop. As far as, you know, taking them apart, doing the work, kind of putting them back together. A lot of stuff passes through the door, right? And we've seen different manufacturers have slides processed through different vendors over over time, right? So maybe that's hot, odd to say it that way. Let me rephrase that. One of the big ones is SIG, and then we're going to jump back in this. SIG seems to take the P365s and have it processed through several different vendors. And sometimes it's a beautiful looking slide, and other times they have a, cha a large chamfered edge on the side of the P320s and the P365s. There's tool marking all the way down through there on that chamfered edge. So whoever is processing that batch of slides for SIG ends up not having the highest quality tooling um, when it leaves the when it leaves the door. I don't know if this is just something um, that was just like a one-off or maybe it was some sort of a, a replacement slide. I, I don't know. I mean, it's doubtful the customer would have ever seen that. If, if a batch of slides went through the process, they made it all the way to quality control. They didn't make it out the door. They said, hey, pull a new slide off, put it on that frame and send it out. Because keep in mind, there's no serial numbers on these, so they could do that. Um, maybe that's how that is. I, I don't know. But what I can say is I've never seen that ridge like that before. So, you know, it is what it is. It's kind of odd because it's in its own zone. It's not really in, in the curl. It's not in the high side. It's, it's really in the low side. So I don't know. Maybe if you guys are one of those really picky people, you're looking to go buy a gun, you, you haven't picked it up yet, or you're still price shopping them out. Maybe you want to look for that and maybe you want to stay away from that. I don't know. It may irritate you. It irritates me. Um, and it's not even my gun. So with that being said, we're going to have to remove that because that's just a no-go for me. So uh, we are going to be doing the Cobra Nose on the front. A lot of that cut is going to find itself missing. But I do think that we're going to see some of that uh, little ridge down in there left over. So I'm going to see if I can knock that out and blend that in. And just, you know, we do want to make it as, um, as clean as we can. I want to set this down. I want to show you guys something else. The customer also sent in a rear cap. Now, I've never heard of... 
um, this company before. I mean, that's not a bad thing. I, I just don't know who they are. And they sent a sticker in there, so that'll go back to the customer. We don't keep those. And then um, this is a new rear cap that has like the, the wavy serrations that kind of match the rear. So this is going to go on here. So we'll go ahead and put this on um, on the way out, so we're going to be able to see that. But sometimes whenever the customer includes some sort of an aftermarket part, I'll um, I'll show it to you guys because I know there's a lot of times you guys are like, well, what was that or who made that? You know. So that's um, there's your answer to that to that question right there. If you happen to see that in the end of the video, now you have your answer of, of where to uh, where and how to order that part. Guys, as far as um, everything else goes, I think it's time to jump into the cut work. You know, I think that's where we are with it now. Um, we've got a, a lot of little different ways of processing this because we've got side shaves, which means it's in the machine. This way we're cutting. We've got some top work, which means the, the reverse raptor is going to be sitting in this, th this way of the machine cutting. And the knurling, and then we're going to go back to the side, and we've got some knurling over here. So we're going to be bouncing around a lot. I think we're going to be all over the place as far as how the work's performed. Um, each one of these pieces to the puzzle will be performed individually. So we're, you know, we'll, we'll run like a, a knurling, a side shave, a cobra nose, a flip, a, a knurling, a top raptor cut. Of course, we've got a flip. So we're gonna see, we're gonna see um, how, uh, how that bestly fits out, I guess. I'm not 100% sure. I know that it's gonna be rotated quite a bit there. Guys, um, we're gonna work through that. And then we're gonna bring it back after it's been colored. We're gonna be going back to a black color, take a good look at what it looks like now. And we're going to take a look and see what it looks like when our coating's been put on it after it's been cut. Guys, let's jump into this. Alright guys, now that we have completed the cut work, let's just kind of briefly go over it. I know a handful of you guys jump to the end of the videos. You kind of just do the little bit of talk about and you want to see a final product. Let's discuss each one of those pieces to this puzzle in case you're thinking about ordering. You'll have the right information that you need in order to help process that order. Top knurling, this is the pattern on the top. Of course we have a, sh a shaved side and reverse raptor cuts here. Okay, and we've got edge knurling on this this particular project, we ended up wanting to keep the logo. So this ended up stopping right here. Usually this would go all the way to the back. You can kind of see a slope down right here. This would go all the way to the back of there. But you can kind of see we ended up stopping it in the same zone here on each side, right? And then we ended up doing the Cobra nose. Real nice, we've got some barrel work. Guys, I want to talk about some of the hurdles of this project. I also want to talk about how I'm very disappointed in the manufacturer's quality of work. Let's put it together first, and then I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the stuff that we had to go through. So, slide, let's jump into the barrel. We ended up doing a, a polished finish, knurled top flag ejection side service on the factory barrel. So, obviously you guys had seen at the beginning, this was black. We ended up going to a, a straight up polish, we strip all that off. These are a stainless barrel, so you don't have to worry about rusting. And they are one of the nicest, highest quality grades of stainless steel that we see on the market when it comes to polishing so we do happen to find a really uh a really nice product in the end i really like the pattern overall it's a very nice matching pattern guys we're going to slip the spring in here i happen to have an actual frame it's not the customer's it is mine i'm working behind the camera so i'm going to do my best to not destroy anything back here let's see if we can get this guy together for you there we go and let's put it on the frame. Then I want to show you guys something. I want to talk about a few things as a whole. I know you guys are pretty happy about that. We hit, we do see the request happen a lot. Of, hey, do you guys happen to have a frame? Can I see it as a full pistol? 
one of the things you have to take in, in mind or keep in mind is a lot of times the customer is sending in just the piece to the puzzle that we're working on and not an entire pistol because uh, you're, it just, it's higher return shipping, it's higher insurance, it's higher risk overall, especially if there's pieces that we don't need. Now, if they're local, we may find ourselves having all of those pieces, but if they're shipping in, usually we, we, we don't. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of the uh, rough parts of this build. First and foremost, I love the design overall. I think that the, um, the barrel is a real key piece to showing uh, just kind of a true picture with being able to see some of the barrel and not staying with black being able to match a top knurling to the top of the slide. I think there's a lot of key aspects of the barrel tying in with the full project. So in my opinion, I think that's uh, definitely something that added to this project and kind of knocked it out of the park as far as the over and above and beyond. I think that was one of the things that really was a key a key player. Now, a couple of things I would still probably change on something like this. I probably would swap out the sights. Obviously, these sights have seen better days. If you guys remember, we, had, we talked about a rear cap. So there's the rear cap. I, I did want to make sure that I showed you guys that. These, this rear sight here itself has been abused kind of before we got it. It's, it's a tight fit. I don't think I don't think these iron sights are actually the sights that came with this pistol. Correct me if I'm wrong. I could be 100% wrong on that. But I don't think these are the sights that ship with the pistol when it was shipped from the manufacturer. I think this was some sort of a replacement at some point in time. These are extremely tight. And once again, you can see that's kind of obvious from both sides being beat with some sort of uh, an aggressive tool before we got it. And of course we, we ended up putting it back in. And, and what we do is we take that, we run it on sandpaper to, to sort of uh, soften the underside of that to get it in. We basically are, are re-contouring and shaping and leveling the bottom of that site to get it to go back in. So that was one of the things that we had to do to get it to go back in. No doubt they can be used. There's nothing wrong with it. I put a little liquid blue on both sides so that way it would uh, kind of get some of those uh, rougher edges from stop uh, showing so much, they were they were silver, so we kind of hid those a little bit better, and then of course we put some oil on it, so that way the uh, liquid blue does not continuously rust everything around it. All right, so one of the other things I want to talk about on this slide is, you know, we talked about at the beginning of the video, we talked about that there was a wrinkle right here, a roll, and, and it's hard to tell, but we did a side shave, and then we did a cobra nose, but that wrinkle was kind of down in this lower edge here, and we did our best to kind of remove that. Now, once again, we didn't cut that with a carbide cutter. We had to gently take that off with a high grit, like a 240 Dremel wheel to kind of get it back down to kind of skim it. So you're basically trying to cut off hardened steel and you're, you're really just kind of polishing it. You're not really cutting it off. There isn't enough grit on a sander like that to do it. If you go with something like a, a lower uh, numbered sander uh, barrel, what's gonna happen is you're gonna leave a bunch of tool marks in there or a bunch of uh, cut marks in there because it's so it's so aggressive. So there's, there's definitely a fine line of how do we do it? What's the best way to approach it? How do we get the best quality overall out of it? And don't destroy anything doing it. And of course, this was something that we did that didn't have anything to do with the customer. It wasn't, wasn't discussed with the customer. We just went, went ahead and did that to kind of correct that the best we could. One of my biggest gripes about these pistols and it's not it's not this model this length it's the 2.0s is the text on the side of the slide is all over the place and I, i'm glad that i had an opportunity to work on a newer one which i'm going to show you here in a second on on kind of reaffirms what i'm saying that it's kind of somewhat evident that it doesn't make any sense so when we shave the sides of these we want to keep as much of the side um material as we can okay so we want to make sure that we're, we're we're really keeping the rigidity here and we're not getting some sort of a flexing issue and the best way to do that is to shave the sides only deep enough to remove the text but then match them so you don't want one side to be super deep and the other side to be shallow because you do want this edge here to make sure that the edge on both sides is the same depth or obviously you'll you'll be able to see that so with that being said we cut down as far as it takes to remove that factory text from both sides and then of course we uh we, you know, we have a go at the rest of the work. This one, you can see if you look carefully, right here there's a nine or a part of a nine left over, okay? This isn't some sort of a leveling issue in the CNC machine when we shave that. This is a difference in depth with the engraving from the manufacturer, okay? And one of the easiest ways to tell that is if this was not leveled in the CNC correctly, we would have an issue with the knurling, okay? So the knurling would have points on one end and points on, on not the other end or it would be a real deep cut here and, and not a shallow or a deep cut over here. There would be some differences somewhere along the way. So that's kind of my gripe about that. It's really disappointing that we see that. I, I don't know why they can't get their, their, their life together. Um, I want to show you another slide that we worked on just this week and a minor project. We'll, just, we'll kind of really discuss it and then I want to show you. 
So this happens to be a, a, you know, a newer generation with the front serrations. We ended up adding a Cobra nose. This is already an optic ready, so we just mounted the, um, the Swamp Fox for them. Not a big deal there. You guys can see how clean this engraving is, right? Doesn't look too bad, right? And then we go over here and we're like, what happened to you? See if we can get you actually in clear. Like, what happened to your life? So you can see right here that this is, I mean, this is even the 2.0. This, this is the logo back here. But then you go here and it's like missing. It's like legitly gone. Of course, we'll add some pictures. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Is It's just, there's discrepancies between the left and the right. We have to do our best in order to cut that off and in order to prep the sides for additional work. But this is kind of the junk that we go through sometimes when we're talking about trying to do perfection type of work. We're working around things from the manufacturer. And in some cases, it's just straight trash from the manufacturer. Okay, and this isn't the only example that I've seen. I mean, I've seen some of these slides, mostly on the 45s, where this side, you can see the rolls here, the curve. This side's got a different edge curve than this side. On the, on the CZ 7s and 9s, if you look at the rear um, dovetail, you'll see that like the distance between here and here is different than from here and here because of, because of the chamfer on the edge. I mean, they're not the only ones that do this, but it's really aggravating when you're trying to create some sort of masterpiece, but then all of a sudden you're like, well, I guess I'm going to shave a little more off. I guess I'm going to flip it over and, and try to do this or I have to grind that out or something stupid. They really, for what you're paying for these weapons, they really need to get their act together, in my opinion. Now, once again, I'm a nobody, right? We all know that. So as far as that goes, you know, my opinion doesn't really count. It is what it is. Am I saying don't buy one of these pistols? Absolutely not. I think they're a really good pistol. I think that there is a, there's a fanboy type of club, just like a cult, like we see with the Glocks. I think there are a lot of people that like the M&P pistols, um, that, that like the shield pistols, they do like the S&W product. The downside is, is I wish the quality was a little bit higher considering I don't feel like the pistols are coming down in cost, but the quality of work is coming down in value. That's my gripe, okay? So you heard it, you heard it from me. Once again, does it mean anything? No, I'm a nobody, I don't do reviews on YouTube, I'm not out there you know, doing some sort of pictures with arrows and showing this and showing that and there's issues. I'm just kind of calling it out for what it is. Nonetheless, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this content. We do have some other builds in the works. Um, I know we've got a couple crazy things coming on here uh, right now that we're kind of trying to wrap up. We've got a lot of big builds that we really just haven't gotten completed yet. Um, so that's kind of one of those deals. But I do think that this was kind of a unique one. I think it was kind of interesting. This is a service that we do offer on the webpage. You are able to offer... I'm sorry, you are able to, to order the service with an optic cut if you want. Um, the knurling portion of it and the barrel portion of it would have to be added to your order, but that's that's no big deal. Um, one of the other things I want to tell you is you should be following us on Instagram. You should definitely take point here. Definitely be going to our webpage and signing up on our email alert because we have a sale coming up in April.